Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of the F1 magazine ahead of the Chinese Grand Prix. Here's what's coming up. A review of the action-packed Bahrain Grand Prix, Ferrari celebrate the opening of a new wing at its Maranello Museum, and Red Bull present their guide to Formula One. Can anybody beat Mercedes this season? It certainly looks unlikely after yet another dominant performance from the outfit in Bahrain. Whilst dominant performances can often result in a less than exciting race, Bahrain didn't follow the script. The race is already being billed as one of the best in recent years. The race began with Lewis Hamilton passing pole sitter Nico Rosberg to take the lead, but it wasn't for long as Rosberg got his nose ahead at turn 4, only to be pushed wide by the Briton. Meanwhile, Felipe Massa charged through from 7th on the grid to 3rd, but gradually dropped back as the race went on to eventually finish in its original position, just ahead of teammate Valtteri Bottas. Before we could witness the Rosberg-Hamilton battle for the lead, Pastor Maldonado caused the safety car to interrupt the race after T-boning the Sauber of Esteban Gutierrez. The Mexican's race was immediately over after his car rolled over before coming to rest on all fours, but not without sustaining serious damage. It looked as though the race was Rosberg's to lose, despite sitting behind Hamilton at the restart. Softer tyres and a quicker car, however, weren't a match for Hamilton's desire to win a second race in a row. Whilst all that was happening, several cars behind were battling for position, taking the Mercedes out of the equation, 3rd to 12th were covered by just 20 seconds, despite over 12 laps of racing after the safety car. Best of the rest honours went to Force India, with Sergio Perez taking the team's first podium since the 2009 Belgian Grand Prix with Giancarlo Fisichella. Nico Hülkenberg, meanwhile, whilst nursing a malfunctioning power unit, took 5th behind the Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo. The action was enough to detract from the engine noise criticism and put racing back on the forefront of discussion. Red Bull and the FIA went head-to-head -head on Monday, as the current champions tried to get Daniel Ricciardo reinstated following his exclusion from second place at the Australian Grand Prix. The Australian, although unaware himself, had been accused of exceeding the fuel flow limit of 100kg an hour. Despite repeated warnings from the FIA before and during the race, Red Bull continued to exceed the flow limit, believing the FIA sensor was giving inaccurate results, whilst its own system was correct. The International Court of Appeal met in Paris on Monday to go over the case, hearing evidence from Red Bull and the FIA. Following a lengthy hearing, the ICA upheld the stewards' decision to exclude Ricardo. The team said they were disappointed by the ruling, but added that they would move on from the saga, whilst Ricardo insists the decision gives him more motivation to get back on the podium. The Formula 1 grid looks likely to expand to 24 cars in 2015, thanks to the FIA granting Gene Haas a licence. The NASCAR team co-owner put forward an application to join following the FIA's tender process to find a 12th team. On Friday, during a World Motorsport Council meeting, the FIA accepted Haas' application following a lengthy review process. The FIA also announced that a potential 13th team, called Forza Rossa, was also being reviewed. Former FIA President Max Mosley says he accepts some of the blame for the quieter power units introduced for the 2014 season as he had a hand in drawing up the regulations back in 2005. The 73-year-old believes the quieter engines are better for the sport too, after he lost his hearing through years of V12s, V10s and V8 engines roaring past him during his days at the FIA. It's too late for my hearing, he said, but not for the next generation. The quieter engines are better for families, you can take children to races without fear of being deafened. Ferrari team principal Stefano Domenicali announced on Monday that he will resign from his position with the Italian outfit with immediate effect. Domenicali said he must accept the blame for Ferrari's recent poor form, which hasn't seen them win a championship since 2007, nor a podium this year. Ferrari's president, Luca de Montezemolo, confirmed that Marco Mattiacci will take up the position, beginning duties at this weekend's Chinese Grand Prix. There's been some positive news from the Michael Schumacher camp, with manager Sapin Kem telling German broadcaster ARD that the German has moments when he is awake and moments when he is conscious and able to interact on a limited basis with his surroundings. She did however warn fans and the media to avoid speculating on the 45 year old's condition and likely state when or if he recovers from his December skiing injury. Just a few days ago, Ferrari President Luca de Montezemolo and the Mayor of Maranello, Luca Bersi, officially opened the new main building of the Museo Ferrari in Maranello. 
the new wing first completes the imposing building, which in the space of just a few years has doubled its visitor ticket sales to 320,000 and has become one of the most admired museums in Italy. Speaking at the opening ceremony, Montezemolo said, With this project, we can regard Maranello's Museo Ferrari as complete. We have built this area to give even more space to visitors, and the work has been done in such a way as to make this place a benchmark, not just for fans, but for families too. The new museum also features a new play area with simulators for children, a wheel-changing attraction that also opens to adults. The facility also has charging points for electric cars, all in compliance with the modern trends of ecology. The president then took those attending the ceremony inside the museum to show them the California Dreaming exhibition. This exhibition celebrates 60 years of Ferrari in the United States and the launch of the new California T, a model that reprises a historic car born in the 50s. The exhibition is organised in four different areas dedicated to racing, Hollywood, excellence and innovation and shows unique masterpieces like the car driven by Albert Toascari and the 1952 Indianapolis 500. A. Aerodynamics. And looking at this big A, I think uh, we have to, it, it rather stands for Adrian rather than aerodynamics. Obviously, he's our guru. If you go back to the early 60s, then up until that point, the emphasis on aerodynamics had purely been on drag reduction. Nobody had properly considered that if the car created downforce, then that would push it into the ground and give the tyres more grip. Which inside the car just feels fantastic if you have a, a lot of downforce. <laughs> Since then, the rate of development has been huge. The amount of grip the car can produce is really what makes the drivers these days enjoy Formula One. It can be the make and break of the season. B. Boobies. Braking. Brakes are one of the most impressive aspects of a Formula One car. It's the thing that blew me away most when driving an F1 car the first time. How quickly you stop. For instance, if a car is travelling at 300 kilometres per hour, that's roughly 200 miles an hour, then it will come to a complete rest in around four seconds. Everyone thinks you've got to go fast by pushing the throttle, but the, the technique used when braking can make you very fast as well around the track. The brakes are a fundamental part of it, and braking distances every year get ever shorter. C. CFD, Computational Fluid Dynamics. To make it simple, it's a big computer that basically calculates uh, the changes you do in terms of aerodynamic on the car. With the wind tunnel model, then you physically have to manufacture the wind tunnel parts, test it on the model, analyse the results. With CFD, you can have results the next day. We don't have much testing on the track, so it's really important uh, back at the factory to work on that. D? DRS drag reduction system. DRS is a way of making overtaking easier. I think because we had it now a couple of years, we, we understand how it works. Basically, it opens the rear wing to make the cars go faster. We have a trigger on the steering wheel, uh, which we can pull. Overtake is not guaranteed, I'm glad to say, but it does make it easier. We, in a way, learn to love it or learn to hate it, depending on where you are, in front or behind, but uh, I think generally it's positive. L'anno 2014 sarà un anno particolarmente importante per l'FDA perché ci vedrà dover consolidare i successi del 2013. Ci vedrà impegnati in campionati sicuramente più competitivi e dovremo impegnarci nella transizione da go-kart alle vetture da corsa con un altro dei nostri piloti. Questi saranno due aspetti dove dovremo concentrarci molto per farsi di dare ai nostri piloti il supporto che necessita. Lance Stroll, un 2013 impegnato nel go-kart, campionato del mondo si è distinto come miglior rookie e il 2014 vedrà il suo esordio nelle vetture da corsa. Dovremo fare molta attenzione a questa transizione che è una fase delicata nella carriera di ogni pilota. 
Antonio Fuoco, il 2013 è stata la vera sorpresa per lui, è diventato il campione della Formula Renault, un campionato molto competitivo, per lui il 2014 vedrà un cambio di categoria e lo vedremo competere nel campionato FIA Formula 3 con il team prima, gli avversari saranno sicuramente molto più guerriti. Raffaele Marcello, un grande 2013, ha vinto un campionato molto importante e competitivo, il FIA Formula 3. Il 2014 per lui sarà un anno chiave, dovrà competere in una categoria alle soglie della Formula 1, quella della GP2. Bianchi, il 2013 è stato per lui il primo anno in Formula 1 con il team Russia, è stato un anno positivo essendo il miglior esordiente. Il 2014 eh, lo vedrà ancora competere in Formula 1, dovrà dimostrare qualcosina di più, quindi daremo il massimo del supporto. Il 2014 ci vedrà eh, dover raggiungere obiettivi sempre più ambiziosi, eh, d'altronde il nostro motto è quando arrivi in cima a una montagna continua a salire. The Chinese Grand Prix is held at the Shanghai International Circuit. The circuit features 16 corners and is a relatively high speed circuit with three long straights plus some tight and twisty sections. Hey, what's up? I'm Lewis Hamilton and today I'm at the Team Factory in the Top Secret Simulator, which no one ever gets to see. So today is all about um, testing for the setup, the fuel usage, the driving style, all those really technical things that we need on the race weekend. This is the Shanghai Circuit. So check out this lap. Okay, we're starting to lap here. Turn one just it seems to go forever. Into turn two, she can't really see the apex and all of a sudden it kind of appears. Really important that the line that you take between one and two, you gotta get a really good exit. So in China, I've had some ups and downs, particularly my first year, I went in there with a uh, big lead in my championship. I've kind of lost it there in the gravel on the way into the pits. Um, but generally, every time I go, I'm getting stronger and stronger and faster. It suits my driving style. We have so much power this year, it's trying to get that power down, so you have to short shift all the way up to fourth. Nice and late into turn six. Just kind of carry a lot of speed at the apex, there's always good grip there. Up through the gears again. Today we're holding fifth gear through, through turn seven and into eight. It's lots of downforce, lots of grip. And then to 9 and 10, which is just kind of slow and low grip. Really difficult because it's very high temperatures on the tires, so. I'm breaking for turn 11. It's important not to break too late here because you really need to position the car well for, for 12 and 13. And 13 just goes on forever. And the car's always moving. 2014, Petronas is using state-of-the-art equipment to monitor degradation of the engine oil during its life and ensure top performance and reliability. You're braking nice and late. There's lots of time to be gained on the brakes there, but also you need to make sure you still get the exit. And to the last corner, you just don't want to lose what you've gained throughout the lap, so you kind of take it a little bit cautious. Not too wide on the exit. And that's the lap. So our work is done here at the factory, now let's take it to the track. Thanks for tuning in. If you've enjoyed the F1 magazine, please feel free to share our video.